Now in this lecture we will focus on linear stability analysis. To determine the stability of fixed points, we had earlier used graphical methods. We now consider linearizing about a particular fixed point. What really is linearization? Well, it's finding a linear approximation to a function at a given point. So the linearization of a function is the first order term of its Taylor series expansion around the given point. In terms of nonlinear systems, linearization allows us to study the local stability of an equilibrium point of a nonlinear differential equation. And it allows us to use tools for studying linear systems to analyze a nonlinear system near a given special point. Now consider x dot is equal to f of x and let x star be a fixed point and let x of t be eta of t plus x star where eta of t is a small perturbation away from x star. We really want to know if the perturbation actually grows or decays. So we go ahead and derive a differential equation for eta. So eta of t is equal to x of t minus x star. So eta dot is equal to dx dt x of t minus x star which is equal to x dot as x star is simply a constant. So eta dot is equal to x dot which is equal to f of x which is equal to f of x star plus eta. And so now we go ahead and using a Taylor series expansion we get f of x star plus eta is equal to f of x star plus eta times f prime of x star plus terms which are order eta squared. Note that this is the big O notation where this term actually denotes quadratically small terms in eta. Note that f of x star is equal to 0 since x star is a fixed point. Hence eta dot is equal to eta times f prime of x star plus terms that are order eta squared. If f prime of x star is not equal to 0, the order eta squared terms are in fact negligible and we get the following approximation eta dot is equal to eta times f prime of x star. Now this is a linear equation in eta which is called the linearization about x star. Now here are some notes. The perturbation eta of t grows exponentially if f prime of x star is greater than 0 and decays if f prime of x star is less than 0. If f prime of x star is equal to 0, the order eta squared terms cannot be ignored and we will need some sort of nonlinear analysis for the equation. Now if we consider the magnitude of f prime of x star, then this magnitude plays the role of an exponential growth or decay rate. Its reciprocal 1 upon f prime of x star 
is a characteristic time scale. Now this determines the time required for x of t to vary significantly in the neighborhood of the fixed point x star. Now let's consider this equation x dot is equal to sin x. Now recall that from the geometric view of thinking essentially what we said was that when you have an equation of the form x dot is equal to f of x then what we should first do is just plot x dot versus x. So for this particular equation where f of x is sin x so what we see here is a plot of x dot versus x where using the geometric view of thinking that we had outlined earlier we were able to classify the stability of the fixed points noting that we were able to do so without any formal analysis and so now we go ahead and use linear stability analysis to determine the stability of the fixed points for the equation x dot is equal to sine x. Recall that the fixed points occur where f of x is equal to sine x is equal to 0. So the fixed points are at x star is equal to k pi where k is an integer. Then f prime of x star is equal to cos of x star which is equal to cos of k pi which is equal to 1 if k is even and minus 1 if k is odd. So when k is even x star is unstable and when k is odd then x star is stable. So this is actually in complete agreement with the results that we obtained from the geometric view of thinking. Now note that with the geometric view of thinking we had no analytical basis really to establish the stability of the fixed points and it was purely geometric. But now we actually have an analytical and an algebraic technique to actually establish the stability or the instability of the fixed points. Now let's consider an example that arises in population growth. Consider the equation dn dt is equal to rn times 1 minus n by k where n of t is the population at time t r greater than 0 is the growth rate and k is the carrying capacity of the population. Our objective is that using linear stability analysis we wish to classify the fixed points of the model and we also wish to find the characteristic time scale of this system. Now f of n is equal to rn times 1 minus n by k. So the fixed points are n star is equal to 0 and n star is equal to k. Evaluating f prime of n we get r minus 2rn divided by k. So f prime of n at n star is equal to 0 is r. So n star is equal to 0 is actually an unstable fixed point. An f prime of n evaluated at n star is equal to k is minus r. So n star is equal to k turns out to be a stable fixed point. In both of the above cases, the characteristic time scale turns out to be the same. So 1 upon the absolute value of f prime of n star is equal to 1 upon r for both the fixed points. Now let's go ahead and plot n dot versus n. By now we are quite familiar with making such plots. So that's a plot of n dot versus n. 0 and k, the two fixed points have been highlighted and k represents the stable fixed point and 0 represents the 
unstable fixed point. So what can we say about the stability of a fixed point when f prime of x star actually is zero? As a matter of fact, in general, we can't say anything. Stability has to be worked out and determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Now let's go ahead and consider some examples. x dot is equal to minus x cube, x dot is equal to x cube, and x dot is equal to x squared. In all the cases, x star is equal to zero, and f prime of x star is equal to zero. So now let's go ahead and consider stability in each of these cases. So we plot x dot versus x and what we find is that we have an attracting stable fixed point. And similarly plotting x dot versus x, in this particular case we find that we have an unstable fixed point. So the last case actually presents us with a rather interesting situation. We go ahead and plot x dot versus x and that's the plot. So we find that the fixed point is attracting from the left and it turns out to be repelling from the right. So we get this situation where the fixed point turns out to be stable on one side but unstable on the other side. So such a situation is referred to as a half stable fixed point attracting from one end and repelling from the other. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of uh, this lecture. This lecture was essentially about linear stability analysis. We are still dealing with equations of the form x dot is equal to f of x and essentially the idea was that you identify the equilibrium point, you take a Taylor series expansion of the original nonlinear system around the equilibrium point, you retain the linear terms and all higher order terms are actually thrown out. So you are essentially left with the linearized version of the original nonlinear system and now you can go ahead and apply all the tools and methods that you learned for linear system analysis to this particular equation. So that's a big advantage. The disadvantage is that you've actually thrown all the nonlinear terms out. Okay? So if you've thrown all the nonlinear terms out, all the fun, all the, all the interesting dynamics have essentially been thrown out. It's a good start, but it's only a start. So then what we did was we took a few examples, x dot is equal to sine x, we took another example where, uh, which was motivated from uh, population dynamics, and then we essentially showed that if you conduct a geometric reasoning around the nonlinear system, which is by plotting x dot versus x, or if you did a linear stability analysis, then you got essentially the same results. Yeah? Except that we left you with some food for thought with the last example. The last example was a rather interesting one. Now, essentially what you actually had was that you had this fixed point which turned out to be attracting from one end but repelling from the other end. So the fixed point couldn't really be classified as a stable fixed point or an unstable fixed point and the terminology we use was a half stable fixed point. Right? And I think we'll just leave this lecture with that particular food for thought uh, with you that uh, you could also end up, you know, a fixed point would essentially not be just stable or unstable, but you could actually have these sort of hybrid cases which arise, uh, which is half stable and half unstable.